Hello and welcome to my channel on the hook crochet where we talk about wearable crochet style and today let's find out what's on the hook. I have diamond painting to talk about today but that'll come a little bit later. Right now I want to talk about what I'm wearing and what our featured pattern is um, for this period of time and I just wanted to let you know that you will have an email in your inbox if you're a member of the community and be sure to join up. There'll be a link in the description box where you can sign up to be in the community so you'll get first dibs on the patterns and also the best offer codes out there and also an offer code you can use all year round even if there's not a special offer code out for you to use so I just wanted to let you know that. Now um, I have several things to talk about today and a new project in my diamond painting hobby craft that I'm really enjoying and I'll tell you a little bit about that and what goes in time out as well. So let's get started. As you know I've been working on the Annie's Kit Club Holiday Spice Afghan. Love this Afghan. It's so gorgeous. So gorgeous. I'm really enjoying working on it. It's a, a new uh, experience every month believe me it's not just doing double crochets across something it's it's making squares here's an example of what I've been working on this month this is the um, square all the squares are now using this mosaic around the edges so it's giving me an opportunity to understand mosaic crochet and if you look on the front this is what it looks like and on the back it looks totally different it looks totally different so um, just learning a lot about the uh, mosaic crochet technique and also some different kinds of stitch patterns on the inside here. It's just been so much fun and we're making it from the Premier Anti-Pilling yarn and it's the worsted size. It's not extremely expensive. It's, it's a very good price on the Premier website and other websites that carry this particular kind of yarn. But it's a, a four weight yarn so it's easy to work with. We use an eye hook. So I have really enjoyed working on this afghan and they've sponsored me for this so I'm, I've been asked to do another one and I probably will in the near future I'll get started on that. But I wanted to show you this other square I'm working on as well. Well I'm not working on it. I'm finished with this one. There are three of these and there are three of these in this particular kit. So in every kit you get a project to do and it's not hard to do. If you get going on it and you start working on it there's also a great video that goes with it. But later in the week I will be pr uh, publishing a uh, YouTube video about uh, this is kit number six actually see the right there it tells you right over there kit number six I'll be working with that and talking about some tips about uh, working with kit number six that I have uh, come across and since I've been crocheting a long time I have some good ideas not a whole bunch but I do have some that you can use if you were working on this particular afghan so uh, also uh, you can get 50% off of your first uh, kit if you if you would like to start one you can do that and I'm sponsored by them now first of all today I wanted to talk about a project that I have going on. This is the cotton sprout top that I'm making and it's called the sunshine top. I have decided to write a pattern for it. It's quite different from any of the other tops I've worked on. So I wrote the pattern for it and then like I said last week I went around the bottom and put a slip stitch stitch all the way around the bottom of the sweater. And then I said, oops, I'm going to take that out because it drew the bottom of the sweater in and I had very little ease in the sweater. You can make it with as much ease as you want, of course, but I, I didn't use much ease in this sweater. So when I pulled in with the slip stitch, it made the sweater too small at the bottom. I didn't like the way it fit me. Um, I'd rather have a sweater just gradually fall down straight on me and uh, because I have a tree trunk figure it's not you know it doesn't come in like that at the waist and go out it's basically kind of the same all the way down <laughs> I don't know if y'all have that um, wonderful kind of figure or not but if you do you know what I'm talking about and so when I took the bottom of this in and put that last row of slip stitch on the bottom it made the sweater way too small so what I did was I went back and I said oh gee I'm gonna just take that little slip stitch out of there I'm just gonna roll it off and I'm gonna put you know just leave it or put another row of single crochet or whatever well I got started on that frogging business and I pulled too far and this is what I ended up with on the bottom um, 
I thought I was pulling out the slip stitch, but honestly, when I when I got to this point, I thought, oh no, look what I've done. Look what I've done. And then I haven't started this side yet. See, I'm still, the slip stitch is still there. So um, I started on one side seam and went to the other side seam, and this is what I ended up with. <laughs> I'm not sure how to fix that. I don't want to spend the time on it, but I think I probably will. It's okay. I will work with it this week, maybe um, when I'm watching TV or something, but this one still needs to be taken out, and uh, I'm not really sure how to take out a slip stitch. I, I started from one end, and I started from the other end, and it still didn't come out the way I thought it should, but I had also tied off all my ends, and that is a problem. If you did a really good job tying off your ends and you know, moving them back and forth. Sometimes it's hard to find those ends, and uh, until you do, you really don't, you really can't start the frogging process until you find the end of the yarn. So that was my problem, but I still love the sweater. I'm planning to wear it. I really want to wear it, but it turned out so cute. I've got some design elements on it and the top. I've also got some around the bottom, and it's going to be a cute little pattern. I made it with, again, Cotton Sprout. This is a size 4. No, it might be a 3. Yeah, it's a size 3 DK, 100% cotton from Premier. Not sponsored, but love this. I love this. This is a very nice yarn. It's good quality yarn. It doesn't split, and it's very, very soft. Um, although it's a little bit heavy. This is kind of heavy. It's not terribly heavy, though, but uh, let me contrast that with what I'm wearing today. Well, today I'm wearing Lydia's Lace, and this is the pattern that I've chosen to feature on my email that I'm sending out to all the members of the community. So if you're in the community, you can find an email in your inbox, and it'll have a special offer code for Lydia's Lace. Now, this is made from Comfy Cotton, my favorite cotton besides cotton sprout i really like that now I've, I've enjoyed that but this is this is um cotton and acrylic half and half and it's made by lion brand not sponsored but it's called comfy cotton in the colorway whipped cream i am pretty sure they still sell this i um Yes, I looked it up on the website this morning on Lion Brand, and they still sell Comfy Cotton. I think they only have two colors left, honestly. But you might go to Amazon or Joann's and find the whipped cream. This is a beautiful color yarn. It's not uh, beige, and it's not white. It's kind of a cream color, just like it says. And I uh, designed this pattern around it, honestly. I love Comfy Cotton so much that I really enjoy crocheting with it. I still have some up in my stash that I might use... Uh, later in the summer I don't really know what I'm going to do but anyway this pattern has plenty of photographs in it on how to work the uh, the lace portion of the of the sweater and right now I'm wearing this with a tan um, a, a skin color for me a tank top uh, underneath it because the light again is really bright coming in and um, it, it it's not as modest as it is just in a regular um, light from a, a room or something so uh, I'm wearing that but I'm gonna stand up and let you see what this looks like well this is Lydia's lace this is a very fun summer project this makes a, um, a sweater that's light and airy you can feel the air going through it but it's modest enough right here from here down that you don't really have to wear a tank top under it you don't have to but it's open up at the top so that you can get plenty of air in the summer. And also the sleeves are open as well. So they're done in treble crochet and it's, it's very easy to make. You can make it out of cotton or you can use a polyester blend if you want to. Uh, again, this is comfy cotton, so it's half poly, half cotton. Very easy to work with and very cool to wear in the summertime. This is a very easy sweater to wear. Now this is what it looks like in the back. I made mine about mid-hip length, although you can make yours as long as you want. And then I had very little ease in it, maybe a uh, couple inches all the way around. So it doesn't have much ease in it. It fits my body fairly well. It falls straight down from the underarm to the hip. So I like that about a sweater. Uh, it just seems to look better on me than trying to um, shape one to make my waist look smaller when it's really not. I have to get over myself. <laughs> But anyway, this is the Lydia's Lace Top, and I'm wearing this with some beige color, 
uh, dress pants, a little uh, a pair of shoes that are kind of an African print. Really like it. I think they're leopard skin print. And I wear these quite often with things that I wear that are brown. So that's what I have on today. And I hope you like it. This is Lydia's Lace, a, um, a really nice summer sweater that you can whip up pretty quickly. Now for Crystal's part of the program, she has agreed to model Lydia's Lace Part 2. And I made this... Um, after I made this sweater, I decided to make one a little bit differently. You can see that the lace is different. The sleeves are longer on this. Actually, they're quite long. They're a lot longer than these. Um, these are probably down to the elbow. And then um, I made it in a multicolor yarn. If you love Lion Brand, you probably know this is also comfy cotton. This is the colorway Driftwood and it is beautiful in Lydia's Lace. I really like it. It gives the uh, the top a lot of color and interest, and the back, of course, is done in the lace across the back, and I think this one is too, actually. Yeah, all that, all that lace back there, but I really like this. It has some blue in it as well, and so it looks great with jeans. I also made this a little bit shorter. This is more of a crop version and with a lot more ease in it, so it, it's, uh, it's probably got maybe uh, eight or ten inches of ease in it but the comfy cotton um, crochets up very well and if since you're using a a long uh, stitch then it has great drape it has look at that it's really nice drape in this uh, sweater it's not stiff and it doesn't stick out it actually kind of drapes nicely on crystal and it'll drape nicely on you so that is the Lydia's Lace part two this is also available with the offer code just like Lydia's Lace is you can choose one or both and this one is not the full pattern so you can't buy this and then know how to make the Lydia's Lace this is this is just the differences in between this one and this one so this is also available out there as well so Lydia's Lace parts one and two are the featured pattern today I have a whip to show you but right now I want to show you my diamond painting project that I've put in time out and one that I've just received so let's take a look now I'm bringing you up to date on my diamond painting projects I had mentioned last week I was going to place irises in timeout when my new canvas came and I'll show you that in just one second but right now I want to show you how far I uh, moved on this particular project I did quite a bit I've done all of this at the bottom you can see right here where I left off right around here and it's already to the other side so I've, I've made really good progress right there see at the top of the blue flowers is where I stopped on this side of the canvas so I've done all of this all the way across and I decided to put irises by Van Gogh in timeout because I have another project Now this is how I put my diamond paintings in timeout I hang them on these um, hangers that I use for skirts in my closet but they're they have a very strong clip and they hold the canvas very securely so I can just hang them up anywhere I want I could take it to my closet put it in the hall closet do anything I want to with it and then when I'm ready to start over it's not wrinkled up or it hasn't been rolled up and that's what I like about putting these into timeout but again this is irises by Van Gogh a beautiful painting I love the colors in this um, he was such a, a, a great artist and did lots of wonderful paintings, uh, both before and after he was sick. Uh, he had a mental illness, but um, he, his use of color is quite gorgeous. And I would love to do one of his vases or vases, as you call them here in the South, call them vases of flowers. And I think that would be the only other one I would do. I've already done the portrait of Dr. Goudet, I think it was, um, his doctor that was helping him in the mental institution. And he did a portrait of him, and I have that hanging up in my living room. But uh, this will go up as well. This has got some beautiful colors in it, and I plan to hang this and get it framed and hang it up. So let's take a look at my new painting that I'm working on. This is my newest painting. It's called Salvatore del Monday. And it's actually, um, I've seen it 
in other places called Saboteur Mundi. And this is by Leonardo da Vinci, and you've all heard of him. And uh, this is a beautiful painting that has just been discovered in the last few years and was um, sold at Christie's on auction a couple years ago, I guess, um, to a sheikh in Saudi Arabia for $450 million. So I thought, you know what? This is worth a shot so, at diamond paintings. Um, Heaven and Earth Designs, and here's their logo right there. This is called, this is their crown jewel canvases section of their website, and they will create a canvas for you, uh, and whatever you want them to, actually a piece of art. Um, they Most of the art they have on their website, it's, it's a huge selection. So I saw this on their website and I thought, you know, I think I'm going to diamond paint that. So I asked them to create me a canvas in this particular size, and, and truthfully, I'd have to measure it. I don't know how wide it is. But I will say that Heaven and Earth Designs will create the canvas for you, and then you buy the drills to go on the canvas. And I've done one of these before. It was called Angel Playing a Flageolet. And beautiful, beautiful painting, and done so perfectly by the computer that they use to generate this canvas. So... Uh, this one has 84 colors. As you can see, all those colors there, they're not very bright. They're not bright colors. But Da Vinci didn't paint that way. He painted more muted colors in his paintings. And this was, uh, again, discovered a few years ago. It was underneath another painting in Louisiana. And a man bought it for a couple hundred dollars, I think it was. And... Um, a, an art restorer took the top layer off and found this. This is a Da Vinci painting. And, you know, it resembles the Mona Lisa a little bit, but Mona Lisa is looking to the side. And this is Jesus, of course, and he is the savior of the world. And if you look down here, this is the crystal world that he's showing. And uh, any artist that's painted this particular type of painting um, uses the crystal and the special part about this is you can see his hand through the crystal and that's one of the most beautiful parts of the painting. You can see the palm of his hand behind the crystal ball there. It's not a magical crystal ball but it's a representation of the world. So they're saying he's the savior of the world. Here he is giving his blessing up here. It is an absolutely gorgeous painting and I can't wait till I'm finished with it and get it up on my wall. And this is how much I've done so far. I did one three inch um, section right here. And then I've started on about a five inch section here and I'm almost finished with it. I just have a few uh, holes there and then I'll be finished with this. Also, when you order from Heaven and Earth Designs, I'm not sponsored by them at all, but they send the painting with um, this washi tape around it and they try to match it to the painting, but they put this around there so that when you place the drills, then they won't go even into the border. So you have to push them up. So this way they don't stick unless you get them on the actual canvas, which I think is interesting. But they go all the way around with the washi tape and make it really easy to diamond paint their paintings. Again, and I'm also using uh, Diamond Drills USA, not sponsored, but their drills are really good. They'll take the list of colors and they'll convert it into diamond drills and pack it all up for you and send it to you all neat and in plastic bags and in, in Ziploc, little Ziploc bags actually. And you can place it into your own containers, which is what I've done here. These are the 84 colors. This is part of them and I've pulled out some that I've been using. I, I like to I like to pull out the ones that I use quite often in the section I'm working on and I'll set them out here so they're easier to find. And then this is the other um, tray that I have. These are the other colors there. So I have this many colors and then I have this many colors to work on this painting. And I pull from both of the trays when I'm working. But um, it's such an interesting hobby. I really enjoy it. It's a craft really um, because you can get better at it. And again, there it is, Salvatore Mundi by Leonardo da Vinci. I don't know about y'all, but I just love to diamond paint. I, I've 
it's just a wonderful craft you don't have to have a huge amount of skill to start and then you increase your speed uh, as you move along and you can take on some larger projects I started with one really small project and it took me a long time to do but then I figured out how to place more than one drill at a time and that is the key so when I take on a huge project like Salvatore moon day then you know that i am working fast because there are i think 77,853 drills on that canvas um, and i've done some that were larger than that i think uh, madonna of the lilies was even more than that 88,000, i think or 105,000, some ridiculous number uh, you you don't want to concentrate on that because then you think oh how can i place so many drills well you're multi-placing so you can place six seven eight nine at the same at the same time if you line them up correctly and put them onto the canvas then you can uh, place more than one drill at a time and that really speeds you up so just a little tip there for you diamond painters now today i want to show you a whip that i'm working on and this is done with the beautiful u pattern i've talked about this a couple weeks ago i started this thought to make a beautiful u out of black beautiful u yarn now beautiful u is not available anymore from Lion Brand. I hate it when they discontinue yarns, but everybody does it. So Beautiful You has been discontinued, but it's also a size two yarn. So you can make this out of a size two yarn over here. This is a size four yarn, I think, and a size three yarn. That is, um, I think it was Chloe by Michaels. I'm pretty sure it was. So, um, you can make this out of any color you want, any size yarn you want, and any size you want. So that's how my patterns are structured. You can make them if you are a size extra small or a 5X. You can make them any way you want. And they're very easy to follow because I don't use a lot of cryptic language. I use very few abbreviations. And which ones I do, I always put the the definition of the abbreviation in the pattern and also I use them very seldom so you don't have to worry about that getting a pattern from me you just read it through get a cup of coffee read the whole pattern through it's written in sentences so there's not a whole lot of you know run-on cryptic uh, pattern talk in there it's just um, easy to understand that's how I like patterns I don't want to spend my time trying to figure out what the designer wants me to do I want to know what the designer wants me to do and I want her to explain it more than one time which is what I try to do if it's a difficult thing or something you've maybe never seen before I try to describe it in two different ways maybe even three so that you'll understand what I'm looking for and how to make the um, the necklines and and how to make the um, the sleeves and this beautiful U is where the sleeves are crocheted right through the front and through the back of the the fabrics that you make you make a front fabric and a back fabric and you're basically through except for sewing it together uh, that's really all there is to it I always add a neck edging around here of some sort and around the sleeves and the bottom so that's all you have to do after you sew it together so it's pretty easy to do so let me show you my whip that I have in progress. Again, this top is made with beautiful you. And if you have some of this sitting around, you probably need about three skeins of it. I think this is my third skein that I'm on now, and I'm just a ways up on the back. And let me just show you how far I've. Oh, oh yeah, I've gotten quite a quite a ways. It's been a couple days since I've picked this up, but this is the back of the fabric. So right here if you'll see right there I'm working on the sleeves see how I've chained out for the sleeves and this is how much I've done quite a bit I'm already to the underarm and working on the um, upper back of the sweater so I'm working my way to the end of this project I'm really excited because I plan to wear this quite a bit I plan to wear it quite a bit it'd be great under a blue jean jacket or with a pair of beautiful white pants tan pants gray pants jeans anything you want so this is what it's going to look like this is the front of the beautiful you and you can see the sleeves are you know a little bit longer than the ones that I'm wearing now in the uh, Lydia's lace but again you can make them as long as you want this is what it's going to look like these colors will be gone because those are my stitch markers marking the uh, decreases for the neck 
Let me get this up here where you can see it a little bit better and I'll stand up. So this is what it's going to look like. Now I plan to add a little bit here at the bottom if I have enough yarn. So it looks like I'm going to have plenty of yarn because I have four skeins of Beautiful You. Um, I may not even need more than the three. I think I'll probably be okay with three skeins of it. So I've done all this work on it. I'm really excited. Look how beautiful that is up close. Let me get this up here where you can see it. Look at that stitch definition there. Now a size 2 yarn might give you a really nice stitch definition or a size 3. You can go to the store and find some beautiful yarn to make this beautiful U top. It's not hard to make. And a, and a size 2 will give you that lightness and that drape that you might like to have in a summer top. This is going to be more of a summer top, but it's black, so I could probably use it all the way into the winter time. Um, in fact, I would love to make a long sleeve version of this, but I don't have enough beautiful you in any one color to do that. But uh, thanks to one of my subscribers, I did, was able to get a hold of this. And this is called Meteorite. And if you can find some of that, it's more like a black color. It's a tiny bit lighter than black. And this is really blowing that out. It's really more, it's more like this color. It's really more of a kind of a dark charcoal, almost black. And I look at this and I see black. I see if I can see get it back here it looks black so that's how I'm going to use it as a black top and I'm really excited about this because something that I've been planning to do for about a year I haven't gotten very far with it because I resist crocheting black yarn it is hard for me to see I have to point a light on it all the time so that I can see what I'm doing and uh, it's just more fun to crochet a light color sweater like this but I really wanted a black top and I wanted it to be special and something that I've made because I'll probably wear it quite a bit um, as I wore the other beautiful you this one right here this one I wore a lot last year it was the coral color beautiful you yarn so gorgeous and I still have it I don't know if you can see it, it's right there um, behind the irises, but uh, I really enjoyed wearing that one, and and I'll still enjoy it. I'm not saying I won't wear it again, but I wanted a black one like that, so I'm working on that. That's the only whip that I'm really working on right now, besides my city skirt. I haven't made any progress on that, because I've been working on um, my Annie's Afghan, which is quite gorgeous and I haven't uh, and I've been working on this beautiful U top so that's what I'm working on this week by the way I'm making the beautiful U with an H hook and this is what is in the pattern as suggested for the size 2 yarn uh, is an H hook and the H hook is a 5.0 millimeter it's perfect for beautiful U and would probably be perfect for any size 2 yarn. Now if you wanted to bump it to a size 3, you would use probably, I would use an I, but you don't have to. You can use whatever size you want to give you the fabric that you want that's not see-through, or if you want it to be see-through, you can do that. Get a larger hook and go to town with that. <laughs> Just wanted to say that one thing. Last week I did not have a giveaway for this week. I was trying to catch up on sending out all my giveaways, and so I did that. And I wanted to make sure that I had a clean slate over here before I started doing giveaways again. So I have one gift that hasn't been claimed yet. And I have one that was claimed and she had just won another gift. So she said, go ahead and choose somebody else for that. So we'll do that today. So let's go to giveaways and see what we can give away for next week. Last time I selected a gift for uh, someone in Crochet World. And it was Sherry Wingler, and she had just won another crochet magazine, or maybe this one. I don't remember what she told me, but anyway, she said to go ahead and uh, draw for a winner for this. And so that's what we're doing next week. So we'll draw for a winner for the crochet world. Use the word world in your comment, and you'll be in uh, the running for this crochet world. I had already planned to give away another crochet magazine, the same one that came in the mail, and I thought, well, you know, I'll just do these both in the same week. So if you use the word world in your comment down below, you will be in the running for one or the other of these gifts. So each time we select a winner, you will be back in the running for the next one. So if you use the word world, then you'll be in good shape for one of these two magazines. It gives you twice the opportunity to win one of those Crochet Worlds. These are great. I was looking at this the other day. Um, I, was, I love to read Crochet magazines and look at the directions and all the different 
patterns that are in here. There are lots of, there are some doily patterns too, which if you like to make doilies, this would be a good one to pick up. If you watch my show, watch it next week. And if you don't win a crochet world, go to the, I think it's Joann's or Michael's or both that sell this particular magazine. And you can pick this one up. It's really good. Um, I don't think there's anybody in here that I know, but there's some really cute uh, patterns in here. So uh, be sure to pick one up if you don't win next week. So there you go. My second and third, actually that's first and second winner there. And then my third and fourth winners will win one of these combination yarn and pattern uh, gifts. And this particular gift is for the busy bag and this came out in my fall lookbook last last fall in 2022 and I came up with this Japanese knot bag which a lot of people have made but mine you can crochet all at one time you just you don't even I don't think you even lift your hook maybe once um, but you can crochet it all in a circle and then you crochet the body and you're all done now the of course the the tassel, you know, you have to do something special with that, but I really like this tassel too. It's kind of cute, but it's made from rewind yarn. And well, let me show you how this looks on. Well, here, I'll just show you the, the pattern. This is what it looks like. Busy bag. And that was in my fall lookbook last year, 2022. And I really like this bag. It's, it's convenient and it's flexible and you can make the straps as long as you want or as short as you want. You can make this just like a little bag you put over your wrist or you can make it long for a crossbody bag like that or a shoulder bag which is what this pattern is designed for. This is a shoulder bag but it takes about one full skein of the special yarn that I'm going to show you. It takes one full skein and just a tiny portion of the next skein to make one of these bags. So my suggestion would be to make the strap short on one and then make it a little bit longer on the other. You have two different straps or make one for somebody and just make it a little one. Make it a little one. And you can make two bags out of two skeins of yarn. And the skeins of yarn are rewind tape yarn and this is super super nice I really enjoyed crocheting with this you only use one strand and it's considered bulky and it really does work up like bulky yarn I, I couldn't believe it but it, it looks like this when you when you crochet it you will use a yellow clover hook which is a 7.0 millimeter or any other brand you want but I use the yellow 7.0 millimeter hook uh, to make this bag very easy to make very cute cute for a gift you know if you have a sister or a mother or an aunt or somebody you want to make a cute crochet bag for and if they're crochet worthy you should make it but anyway this is rewind yarn and rewind is going to be the key word now i have two different colors of this this is the colorway willow is i don't think it's available anymore but i looked and found rewind yarn on lion brand site and it's on sale for 419 a skein so you can get uh, a whole purse out of four dollars or a little over four dollars worth of yarn and it's very soft very nice very good quality very nicely yarn and uh, i see all the different colors there probably three six nine ten there are nine colors available and two are sold out. But the willow yarn is the color that this is. It's really pretty. It's mixtures of brown. And uh, it's not just one solid color, so it's really pretty. It's kind of a mixture, as is this. And I don't remember the color of this. It's some kind of charcoal color, I guess. But this is um, the one that I made and the one the picture's made of. And then there's one called Current situation and it's the color of current which is a kind of a plum color really pretty um, that is so current situation I believe that one is available and it's on sale for 419 at Lion Brand today um, if you're a current watcher then you can go out there and order it if you want to it's usually $5.99 a skein so um, there would be two of these skeins and two of these skeins. Each two will come with a pattern for the busy bag. So I'll send this pattern already printed to you with the yarn and there'll be two winners. One will receive the willow and one will receive the current situation. I'm not going to discern between the two. Just use the word rewind 
and you'll be in the running right there. See, rewind, R-E-W-I-N-D, rewind, and you'll be in the running for one of these two gifts next week. Well, I hope you enjoyed my show this week. Please like my video. If you like what you saw, please do that and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I know a lot of you are watching me, but you're not subscribed. So please do that. It doesn't cost one penny. It also doesn't cost anything to be a community member. And all you need to do is sign up using the link down below and you will receive an email every now and then about what I have uh, to offer and what's going on in um, On the Hook Land. And, uh, watch my Instagram posts too. A lot of y'all do that. Uh, you look at my Instagram posts and I will post things that I'm working on out there, uh, progress that I've made on my Afghan. Usually I throw it out there on Instagram so that y'all can see it. So please subscribe and please join the community. It doesn't cost anything. And when you join up, you get a free pattern. So be sure to do that. So join me next time to find out what's on the hook.